Hello everyone, welcome to this week's I Can't Believe That Happened. Please forgive me for missing a week and especially during Black History Month that is really hard for me. I will maybe hopefully have time to do two in one week to make up for it. Um, it's been a little crazy here at the house but um, thank you for being patient with me. Today I wanted to give you a story of a woman that I am so sad and surprised that I have never heard of before. And her name is Elizabeth Jennings, and she's about 100 years before Rosa Parks. And I think her story is going to sound very familiar to you as you hear it, but this happened 100 years before. Now, this is going to involve a really amazing act of bravery. It's going to also include a future president and um, a little bit of a surprise in there, too. Um, I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I enjoyed researching it. I just wanted to do a really quick thank you to Mo Rocca. He has a podcast called Mobituaries, and without his podcast episode, I don't know if I would have ever heard of Elizabeth Jennings. So it's part of the reason that I love podcasts is this gives us a way to share stories that for some uh, some reason, um, many of us haven't heard before, even through years of college and high school and grade school and lots of United States history classes, I had never heard about Elizabeth Jennings. So I am really happy that Maraca did his episode about her, and I'm happy that I can use his research and the research I did to bring you a little bit more and, um, and tell you about Elizabeth Jennings. So thank you, Maraca, for a great podcast, and uh, thank you for giving me a big leg up on my research. All right, so Elizabeth Jennings was born in 1827, and she was born to a freeborn father, and her mother was a slave. Um, now, her father um, was Thomas L. Jennings, and he was a very successful and well-known tailor. He is also known to be the first black patent holder. He, was, um, he became a patent holder in 1821, and from the research I was able to do, it looks like it was um, based on a new way to clean clothing, like almost a dry cleaning. Um, because of this, he was able to purchase his wife's freedom, though there was an abolition law of 1799, which made her be an indentured servant until 1827, which was right when um, Elizabeth was born. Now, her mother and her father both were believers that education was the key to changing everything that having an inner life and having an education would be what would elevate their children and their entire community so she was encouraged to learn poetry and essays and to be a public speaker she was taught to always speak up and that education was the way to move forward now, when Elizabeth was a young woman, she became a school teacher at the New York African Free School and was an organist at her church, and she was a very um, active member of her church. So this is kind of cool, which I did not know, and I probably should have known this, but in the 1850s, a bus was actually um, a horse-drawn wagon. So when I'm saying bus, or if I'm mixing up my words, that's what I mean is a wagon with um, horses drawing it. Uh, these were not run by the city, which I also did not know. These were private companies. And they felt since they were private companies that they were able to refuse or segregate based on what they thought they should or could do. If you listen to the news or um, kind of are aware of what's going on, you might hear that these stories are still happening even right now. So it, it's interesting to see where all this goes and where the roots of it are. All right, so at that time, um, there were segregated carts. So there were carts for people who were black. There were carts for people who were white. And the, I could not really, I'm sorry, I really did a lot of research on this, but I couldn't tell if it was an actually written law, but it didn't seem like it was. It seemed like it was more of a quote unquote understanding that a black person would be allowed onto a segregated wagon if all of the passengers agreed to it. I can't even begin to tell you how I feel about that. Um, but I'm sure if you listen to this podcast, you know how I feel about that. Uh, so if all the passengers agreed, they could come on. So on July 16th, 1854, Jennings and her friend Sarah Adams were running late for church. And a segregated cart or um, an all-white cart had driven up. And they 
boarded the cart. It seems like no one actually objected to this except the ticket taker. Um, he told them to get off of the cart immediately. Right when that happened, another cart came up and that was the black um, cart and that was full. They couldn't get on it. So <laughs> Elizabeth refused to get off of the cart. This is where things get really intense and I will, um, I'll try to break it down because I know that we have a lot of kids listening, but I'm sure you can probably tell how bad this got. And we are incredibly lucky that there were newspaper articles about this event. So we do have tremendous amount of detail of what actually happened. So she was ordered to leave and refused to leave. The ticket taker physically threatens her and comes up to her and she tells him not to lay his hands on her. He does try to grab her out of the train where she holds onto the window sash until he pulls her off of the window sash. She then grabs his lapels and on his jacket and will not let go. He throws her out into the street. Um, she does get injured and, and kind of scratched up. However, she runs to the back and jumps onto the cart again. I mean, like this level of disobedience is so important because there are ways to move things forward. And this is definitely a time where disobedience is really an important tool. And she uses this to challenge a system. So she gets back onto the the cart and will not leave he then drives to the nearest police officer who also grabs her and forces her off her clothes are torn she is um she is definitely um not severely injured but definitely injured and she and her friend go to church where her father um takes donations at the church i don't know i don't think it was that day exactly but very quickly after um takes donations to sue the rail company. So this was the Third Avenue Railroad Company. This becomes a huge story. Frederick Douglass even writes about this case in his paper. The lawyer who takes on their case is Chester A. Arthur. And this is like almost exactly 100 years before Rosa Parks. So the jury who decides whether this is okay or not is a jury of all white men. Now, she asked for $500. They um, oh, please forgive me, everyone. Um, most of you listen to the podcast know I'm disabled and I'm having a little trouble with my words. So please be patient with me. Um, she asked for $500. She was awarded 250, which is about $8,000 today. So they gave her half of what she asked for, but they did rule in her favor. Judge William Rockwell, he added 10% onto that. And he also added her legal costs. So this court case made a big change. This showed that to all the rail companies that if they continued this segregation practice, they could be sued for a lot of money. This started a desegregation that took about 10 years um, and a few more cases almost exactly like this, but it did lead to the full desegregation of the public transportation system in New York in 1865. Elizabeth's life afterwards, she goes on to teach for about 35 years. And one of the things I loved hearing about was that even as she grew older, she did open and operate one of the first kindergartens um, for black children in New York. So that was, um, I was a teacher for a long time. I really respect and love this. Um, she ended up um, dying on June 5th of 1901. All right, so for a woman who kicked off the desegregation of public transportation, what was the legacy? So what do we know about her? How, um, where is her statue is really what I'm getting to. Where is this woman's statue? All right, so thanks to a group of third and fourth graders from PS, which in New York I'm gathering as public school, um, 361, they lobbied in 2007 to name a street corner Elizabeth Jennings Place. So that just kind of shows all of you, if there's something you believe strongly in, this is a group of third and fourth graders who were like, hey, where's this person's statue? Where's this person's notoriety? So they lobbied and successfully lobbied to change the street corner's name. In 2019, which was not that long ago, Shirlene McRae announced that there will be a statue at Grand Central Station. So go to our show notes. I'm going to be linking up everything I possibly can, photos, 
Um, if there is a donation spot for this, I will have it there. Um, see if you can help out make this happen. I think this is a really important statue to put up. So, um, nice segue in here. Speaking of help, um, did you know that we have a Patreon? It I can't believe that happened. So, this is all self-funded. Um, this is all something I just do out of pocket. If you find value in this podcast, and um, if you can, would really appreciate um, you becoming a patron. Um, I do not make anything cost anything. So none of this will ever be behind a paywall. You will always be able to access everything from this podcast without paying for it. But if you find value in this and you can and would like to, I would really appreciate the help. Um, if you find value in this and this is n the Patreon is just not something you want to or can do, but you would like to support the show in other ways, please um, share our show. <laughs> um, send this out to friends, family, homeschool groups, Facebook groups, your social media. I deeply appreciate it. I do not do advertising as of yet. So the reach we have is entirely thanks to you guys being generous with your time and sharing the episodes. Um, thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful week. Um, I will do my best to put out another episode next week.